Hey, how's it going, duty sulfurs? Today I'm going to talk to you about torque and horsepower. I'm going to explain to you what they are and how they're different. Now, I know there are some videos on YouTube done on this subject by seemingly very smart people, but the problem is that they do it like a dumbass. So now I know I'm not the smartest person in the world, but I'm going to try to explain it to you like one. And in order to be able to do that, and for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using this engine, this pry bar, this long piece of pipe for some reason, and of course our good old whiteboard. But as far as why we're we talking about torque and horsepower all of a sudden, well that's because I was finally able to find a car that I've been looking for forever to do mods on. That car is going to be featured in a lot of upcoming videos and it's going to get a lot of upgrades and mods in order to increase its torque and horsepower output. Probably a lot of dyno runs as well. But not to worry, I won't go fair mod project on you. Now I'll feature that car in a separate video, but go ahead and try to guess what kind of car Ratchets and wrenches has bought to modify. All right, now as far as what's the difference between torque and horsepower? Well, first, let's start with torque. All right, so basically torque is the measure of twisting force. And we're talking about a car engine, we're talking about how much twisting force your crankshaft can put out. So here's the back of this engine, and here's the back of our crankshaft where it attaches to our transmission. So basically, we're talking about how much twisting force this crankshaft pr can produce as it's turning. Now, you might be thinking, can twisting force be accurately measured? And oh yeah, it can. It's called physics. Now here's a formula for it, which basically means torque equals distance times force being applied exactly perpendicular to our pivot point. So for example, let's say we want to take off this axle nut and we wanted to measure exactly how much torque is required to remove this axle nut. So we'll grab our pry bar, put our socket at the end of it, and if you want to use the equation that's on the board, to measure the torque required to remove this nut, we would have to make sure that this goes on there, or rather the force applied to this uh, pry bar is exactly perpendicular to the way our pivot point, or rather this uh, axle with the axle nut at the end of it is. So as you know, our axle here is going this way. Here's our axle nut where it's gonna be our pivot point. So if we were to use that equation, for example, we wanna make sure when we're applying force to this pry bar that this is exactly perpendicular to our axle. Now you can still measure torque if you apply pressure, let's say at this angle, but you simply have to use a different formula. All right, now for simplicity, let's just simply say the distance from the pivot to the end of this uh, pry bar around applying force is going to be one foot. And if you wanted to measure exactly how much torque is required to twist off this axle nut, you would simply have to find a way to start adding weight at the end of this one foot long pry bar. And when we get to a weight, where this turns and loosens our axle nut, that's how we can measure the torque required to get this off. So for the sake of argument, let's say we put 150 pounds at the end of this pry bar, and that's when we are able to loosen this. So next, all we have to do is to plug those numbers into our equation. We use one foot for the distance, which was the length of our pry bar, and then 150 pounds, which was the amount of force applied at the end of this one foot pry bar, which equals 150 pound feet of torque. Now let's say I want to try to twist this off manually, but since I haven't had spinach for today, I can only put out or apply 30 pounds of pressure at the end of this one foot long pry bar. And if you plug in those numbers into our equation, it's going to mean we're applying 30 pound feet of torque or twisting pressure to that axle nut, which is simply not going to be enough to twist that off. All right, so since in this equation, we only have two variables, and one of those variables is going to be limited to 30 pounds, we simply have to change the second or the other variable in order to be able to increase our twisting force. And you guessed it, all we have to do is to get a five foot long pry bar to be able to get the amount of torque that's required to get that axle nut off. Now I don't need to twist off this axle nut using this pry bar as an example, but here's some footage from a different video. Quite orgasmic, I know. That's right, in physics, torque is sexy. Torque is sexy should be on a shirt. Probably already is. Now a couple of things that I don't confuse anybody. When people talk about uh, torque from an engine, they, they always use one foot as their standard measuring distance from the crankshaft. Also torque from your engine varies based on how fast your engine or your crankshaft is spinning. And when they say, uh, let's, you know, so and so engine, let's say this engine has 300 pound feet of torque, they're basically saying uh, 300 pound feet of torque is the maximum amount of torque that engine puts out. 
But in other words, they're talking about peak torque for that engine. Also something of note is similar to this equation and what we did with the pry bar, you can increase and decrease the amount of torque you get out of your engine by running the amount of torque coming out of your crankshaft through different sized gears inside your transmission. So for example, if we were to oversimplify, we would say our engine can only put out 30 pounds of pressure. So we would simply run it through different gears to get different amount of torque. Now, of course, there are limitations to this and a fine balancing act that engineers have to pay attention to when designing transmissions to be linked up with different engines. You can't simply put bigger and bigger gears in your transmission to get more torque and not lose out on anything. And the main one is that when you link up a large gear in your transmission with your crankshaft, you do get more torque, but the RPM for that gear is going to go down. And when the RPM for that goes down, the RPM for your output shaft coming out of your transmission goes down as well, which is going to reduce your overall speed. Also, when you take in your car to get dyno, the numbers you get are the torque and horsepower at your wheels. And of course, you always have a little bit more power at your engine than at your wheel, because between your engine and your wheel, you have your uh, transmission, your axles, maybe a differential, and those all provide some resistance to the horsepower and torque that's being transmitted through them. All right, so that's all there is to know about torque. Now let's talk about horsepower. All right, in so many words, horsepower is simply all about torque plus time. Or in other words, what time frame can I apply my 30 pounds of whole clock pressure at the end of this pry bar to twist this nut off? We're talking about a second, 30 seconds, an hour, what? And when talking about car engines, here's how the formula looks like. So horsepower would equal torque times the RPM or revolutions per minute at which said torque was measured, divided by 5252. As far as why we need to divide these by 5252, well, it's gonna require a little story. Long ago, in a galaxy not too far away, this guy over here was selling some type of engines. They might have been steam engines, and he also may have invented them. I don't know exactly, nor do I care. But the point is, he had to find a way of measuring the power out of these steam engines and equate them to horsepower since all the work back then was being done by horses. So what he did was to pick out a random horse then asked his lovely wife which happened to weigh exactly 550 pounds at the time to get inside top of a basket and now don't judge there she's pretty thin where she's from and then asked the horse to try to lift his lovely wife and what he found out was that the horse could lift up 550 pounds one foot per second. Or in other words, one horsepower equals 550 foot-pounds per second. Now from there basically what had to be done was to convert torque times RPM into this right here. And that was done through a page long worth of uh, math problems and calculations of which we're not going to get into in this video, but the result was if you were to divide these by 5252, you would get your horsepower rating. So yeah, basically we have horsepower because back then they used horses to do work. This could have easily been, uh, I don't know, elephant power, camel power, bull power, donkey power, all of which would have a different number here. Also, you might find it interesting that when you take your car to get dyno, what they do is actually measure the torque at your wheel. And once the computer has your torque and the RPM at which that torque was measured at, it plugs them in into this equation right here and gives you your horsepower. And as I said before, the numbers you get for your horsepower and torque whenever you get your car dynoed are your peak numbers, basically the maximum your car was able to put out. So if this were to be your dynograph on this car, you would have 350 pound-feet of torque and then you would have 300 horsepower, regardless where that peak torque or horsepower was measured at in regards to RPM. So in so many words, those peak numbers, they mean something, but they're not everything. Also, if you look at your uh, dynograph, you'll see that both your torque and horsepower curves cross each other at exactly 5252 RPMs. And again, that's because that's how the horsepower is calculated from torque and RPM. All right, so that's that, but let's go on to the real issue, which is what types of mods you guys like to see most on my new project car out there, and also what kind of effects you guys think the set mod would have on torque or horsepower. This is going to be especially interesting because I'm planning on taking the car in to be dynoed pretty much after every mod. So go ahead, leave all your comments and suggestions down below. And if you see one that you like, give it a thumbs up because that's how I see it. It moves up to the top of the page and that's how I get to see it. 
All right, so now before you go, do me a favor and share this video on your favorite social network. Also, check out these other related videos that I put links to on the side of the screen. There will also be links down below in the description box as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.